This is Kevin here with Divinely Designed, and uh, we have a video tonight. Now, I'm not going to do a soap video, but I'm going to be talking about soap-related elements. Uh, on one of my other videos, I had asked for some ideas about you know, what you guys want to learn about or are interested in, and I had a couple people ask me about uh, resources, so where to shop for things and where to get good buys and that kind of stuff. So tonight what I thought I would do is go over some of those things uh, and talk about where I've bought stuff from and um, where I get different kinds of supplies from. So I'm going to do that. It's probably going to be a little bit of a long video, kind of me just chatting and talking about stuff, but I'm going to put a link down below to all of the sites that I'll be talking about. So if you're interested uh, about just shopping online and you don't want to listen to me, just go to the links down below and uh, check out those those. Um, uh, those companies. I'll try to organize it so it's nice and easy to read as well. Um, and then one, just one little sort of caveat or um, uh, reminder about this, I am not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with any of the companies I'm about to talk about. Um, I suppose by me talking about them here, I am sort of endorsing them a little bit. I've used them and they're on this video, so I've had good results with them. Um, my goal here is just to share information. It's not to bash any companies or talk badly about them. Uh, you may use some of the companies I've talked about tonight and have had bad experiences with them. And I understand that completely. Um, I would just encourage you, if you do have those stories, feel, you can feel free to share them with me if you like, but private message me with those. I'm just not here to sort of post negatively about um, any companies. And certainly if you have good experiences with companies or you have companies that um, you think I should check out or that you've had good experiences with or have good buys, certainly post those in the comments because I would love to check them out. Um, and I'm always looking for new sources uh, to buy interesting stuff from. Okay, great. So uh, let's get started. Okay. Okay, so let's get started with the first thing that you need to make uh, soap, and that's the fats, the oils, the butters, uh, all those things that make uh, soap uh, great. So I've used a couple of companies um, over the last several months, uh, or since I've gotten started making soap, um, and I uh, just wanted to talk about them. So uh, again, I've ordered some specific items from places, so uh, this one, let's start with this one here. This is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. This is lanolin butter. Um, not necessarily um, a, a usual ingredient in soap in terms of oils and butters, but um, I mention this because Wholesale Supplies Plus um, is somewhere I will go to, um, and they have a lot of different things, not just oils and butters. They carry lots of different products. But, um, you know, sometimes I can find really good deals there. Now, not always, uh, but I do like to stop over there, check things out, and see what their prices are. So for lanolin butter, I think this is a good example I found um, for a pound was probably the cheapest I could find. I think there was probably an Etsy store or maybe an eBay store where I found it for very similar pricing, but it was... Um, like halfway across the world or something. I forget where it was, but so Wholesale Supplies Plus is one. Um, another one is Essential Depot. I know this label's really faded, but this is actually tallow. Um, I will tell you, I probably don't order um, oils. I was ordering my tallow from Essential Depot, but um, I have since learned how to render my own tallow. And um, I have a video about that, so check that out if you're interested. It's really not that hard. Uh, I know some people are sort of sensitive to the smell of it, but if you are interested in making soap with um, animal fats, tallows, or lard, um, you know, check out some videos on making it yourself. It's really not that hard. It's, it's a little bit time consuming, but um, I, I promise you, you will feel very satisfied after you have done it. Uh, but I do have some tallow sort of left over from Essential Depot. Um, this is another Wholesale Supplies Plus. Again, this was a specialty oil, Babassu oil. So sometimes, again, for Wholesale Supplies Plus, I'll check them out if I'm looking for something sort of specific. Uh, and sometimes they'll have a good price. Or maybe I'm looking for like a smaller amount um, and have that. Um, 
obviously uh, you can check out your supermarket and um, if you have you know a local Walmart or Target or just you know um, um, good shopping center that has good prices you could certainly find things like olive oil um, uh, for decent prices there and uh, you're also not shipping it so you're saving costs in those so be sure to think about your local stores as well in terms of oils um, this is one from uh, J. Edwards International Inc. So this happens to be jojoba oil. Um, I, w I think probably when I first started soaping, I ordered a few things from J. Edwards International. They tend to do, if you're looking for really big amounts, you may want to check them out. I should also mention that, you know, I'm a hobby soaper, basically. Uh, so I'm doing pretty small amounts here. Um, but if you're looking for larger bulk quantities, uh, give these their website a, a view, um, J. Edwards. I don't normally, I mean, I don't order big quantities, so I'm not sure about their pricing completely. But um, I know they do sell really big quantities. Um, some that I don't have pictured here, Brambleberry. Um, that was probably the first site I went to to buy oils and butters. Um, and I don't really buy oils and butters from them so much anymore. Um, the other one I'll mention is uh, soapmakingresource.com. Uh, I have bought one or two things from them. They are, they are probably the closest facility to me. I, they're out in, the, I think, sort of Lancaster County in Pennsylvania. I'm in Philadelphia. So I, I potentially could actually drive to them, but um, check them out. And then Elements Bath and Body, I've purchased some oils from them. Again, not recently, but um, that's another place to take a look. I will tell you right now where I purchase the majority of my oils from is Soper's Choice. And that's these two plastic bottles back here in these blue bags. Um, they come in these great containers. They're sort of good amounts for me. Uh, this is seven pounds um, of oil, so you can order them in this, and it's a, I think that's a, like a decent amount. Um, so, and you can get really, really good prices here. Um, and they carry lots of different kinds. So this is sweet almond and avocado, this is shea butter and cocoa butter back here. Um, and you can get them in pretty big quantities if you want, and they have generally very good prices. Um, and shipping has been very good for, for me for using them. So that is my current go-to place for oils and butters. Um, I have looked at, especially for shea butter, I like shea butter. Um, I've looked at trying to source it from like a more local, um, like African um, place. And there are a couple companies out there, but I've never done it. Uh, so I may be looking into that in the future to try and get shea butter that's, um, you know, not really processed very much or it comes directly from an African source, and uh, I'm just trying to make sure that you know some of those some of those companies are. It's hard to find out sort of um, if they're. I don't know how to say this. If they're good companies, you know, they they will advertise like, oh, we work with uh, local people, and we make sure to source the stuff locally, and the money goes back to those people. Um, so it's hard to sort of verify some of those things, but I, I'm trying to look into that a little bit. Okay, so that's oils and butters, um, Soper's Choice, Elements Bath and Body, Brambleberry, Essential Depot, Soap Making Resource, J. Edwards, and Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, I will have links to all those down below. Check those guys out. Okay, uh, next up, let's talk about lye. Okay, let's talk about lye. <clears throat> so... Probably, I have ordered from very few places in terms of lye. When I first started soaping, um, I ordered from Brambleberry. This happens to be potassium hydroxide, so I still have a bottle from um, Brambleberry about that because I just don't use it that often. Uh, but I did order from them. But when I first started soaping, actually where I got my lye from was here in Pennsylvania, we have Ace Hardware Stores, and they carry a brand of drain cleaner called Roto that is 100% lye. And it comes in one pound plastic bottles, and depending on what kind of store you are, like if you're in a city store or a country store, you can get it somewhere between like, oh, let's say 325 and 425. Um, for a one pound thing. So that, that was always sort of very cost effective for me and that's where I've used 
got the majority of my lie. Uh, when I switched and I wanted to order some bigger quantities, um, I switched to the lie guy, and that's this one right here. Um, so he will send them in these containers, and uh, he offers a deal if you order six, six of these. Well, yeah, six. Uh, the sixth one is free, I think. Um, so it's a nice price on that, and shipping is not bad for me because he's in uh, Syracuse, New York. Uh, it's just, as far as I know, it's like one guy, and he just manages the lie. He's like a stay-at-home dad. Um, and I've always had great response from him in terms of shipping. So uh, that's where I order my lie from now. Um, if you are ordering larger quantities of lye, I have certainly heard people talk about on the forums um, just contacting a, ke a chemical supply company. A lot of times that will be your best bargain. If you can find a local chemical supply company where you can get lye in like 50 pounds, uh, that may be your best bet. Uh, now, depending on where you are, uh, what part of the state, or what part of the country or world, um, you know, you may have uh, you may have to register with them or uh, submit your business license before they give you 50 pounds of lye. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, if you go to the, I, when I went to the Ace Hardware store, I, I can remember one time I kind of cleaned them out and they only had like, you know, six bottles of lye, but I bought all of them. I took them all off the shelf and brought them up to the counter. But where I was was in, um, out in Lancaster County, which is, you know, a, a big farming community. And the, the lady at the counter actually said to me, are you making soap? So, um, you know, depending on where you go, you get sort of different responses. I've heard some people say they get looked at very funny or, you know, they're asked to fill out forms, um, you know, stating that they're not making methamphetamines or any drugs or anything like that. So, uh, but anyway, so I don't have a ton of resources here for you. The Lie Guy, Brambleberry, your local hardware stores, um, or a chemical supply store that may be nearby to you or is you know, relatively close in terms of shipping, those are places to check out. Okay. All right, so that's it for lye. Let's move on to soap mold. So stay tuned. Okay, so now we're getting into some of the fun stuff, right? So mold for making soap. Um, uh, let's see, where to start? Okay. The, the one I use the most is, is definitely the Essential Depot red silicon mold. Um, and you can see that I have it in this wire basket. Um, they are stackable, so if you have multiple ones, you can stack them on top of each other. So I have three of these. Again, remember, I'm a hobby soap maker that does a little selling on the side. Uh, so I'm not making super large quantities of this. But I really like this mold. It works very well. It holds about, I think, about a three pound recipe. It makes, um, I tend to fill mine very full. And um, I also use the Essential Depot um, cutter that this loaf fits in perfectly and it will cut one inch uh, thick bars. So that is by far the, mo the one I use the most. I like it. I have never had a problem with it. The soap comes out of this mold really well. The basket holds it up really nicely. I will tell you before I got, they had the basket, um, I had it built up with cardboard and stuff and it would sort of bow out when you put the soap in it. Um, but with this basket, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, so that's the one I use the most is from Essential Depot. Um, this is another great one. I got this from a co-op on Facebook but it comes from the American Soap Supply Company, and this is a tall and skinny mold. Um, and I've only used it a couple of times, but it, it makes a beautiful, tall, skinny bar instead of the, you know, the one I was just showing you makes a much sort of wider bar. Um, so this is real, a really nice mold. I like it a lot. Um, it has these ribs sort of on the side that prevent it from bowing out when you um, pour your soap batter in here. Works really well. I haven't had to sort of, um, you know, truss it up with anything to support it. Um, so this is another nice mold. Um, I have to mention this one. Um, I got this one here. This is this is called the Copra. The Copra, ver uh, you can see out there. Um, this is a beautiful acrylic mold. 
Um, this actually comes from a company called Saponin, um, and it's from an island, the island of Guadeloupe, which is in the Antilles. Um, the site is in French, <laughs> so I do not speak French, uh, so it took me a little ways to get it, but I saw this mold on a video, and I just, I just loved it. I think it's beautiful, like it's, it's a piece of art, practically. Um, the mold itself takes a little getting used to. Um, it comes apart, so it, you know, it sort of slides apart. Uh, but it, it, you know, when you have it together, and you have the one sort of thing you have to be careful about is it fits on the bottom and it will lift up. So you have to be careful once you've poured your soap that you don't hold it by the sides. You actually have to make sure to pick it up from the bottom. But it comes with, you can get a little packet that, like this is a thing to push the soap. Um, you can get a little cutter that goes with it. It comes with uh, these uh, acrylic pieces in it um, that fit into the mold. So you put them in before you pour your soap and then you will get a beautiful bar um, out of this mold. And it's just gorgeous when you pour a soap, that, especially one that does lots of swirls. It's, you can see the side of it, it's fantastic. I, I will tell you that um, it, it is pricey. It's a little on the pricey side and it ships from the Antilles, so shipping can kind of be a killer. Um, but, you know, so I, I don't know that I would recommend everybody get this mold. I like using it. Um, I think it's a beautiful mold to have. Um, and I will, you know, I'll list the company down below there. It's again called Sapini. And I will tell you, they were, they were a joy to work with. Um, I told them, you know, sort of using Google Translate that I didn't speak French very well. Um, and they were super nice. They wrote back and they said, you know, we don't speak English very well. And so we were kind of communicating back and forth um, uh, through Google Translate. But they were very nice uh, people to work with. So... Did take a little while to get this, obviously, because it was being shipped internationally, but okay. Um, in terms of other types of loaf molds, um, these are two. This one, I think, is a well-known one um, that is a crafter's choice mold, but uh, which you can get from Wholesale Supplies Plus, or I'm sure there are other, there are other um, affiliates of uh, crafter's choice out there who you can buy this from personally probably. Um, I did not get mine from from them. Uh, I actually got these two and this is just um, this is a silicone one that has a little box in it. Um, this makes a small um, a small loaf of soap so if you're looking at just maybe making a test batch I've used that for this. But I got both of these from Alibaba.com. Now um, you know, I like to be about information sharing and transparency. So let me just tell you that when I first started soaping and I was looking for molds, I didn't really know where to go to get everything. And I was looking for a good deal on this mold because I had seen lots of people use it. And so I was just searching online for a good deal. And where I found it was Alibaba. Now, Alibaba is a place that will ship primarily from Asia, but I guess it's all over the world. Um, so internationally. And um, I did. I bought three of them. They were a really super good price, which I don't remember what they were. But typically in Alibaba, you're buying really big quantities of things, of usually, you know, like 10,000 bottle caps or whatever it is, or 50,000 widgets. So there's usually a minimum amount you have to order. Uh, these, both of these had very small minimums. This was just one, and these were, I think, three. But so I got a good price. But then, you know, after I sort of learned a little bit more, what I have to say is I, I probably won't use Alibaba again. Not that they were bad. Um, it took a long time to get these because they were coming from Asia. But um, in terms of trying to be a better, um, greener world citizen, you know, shipping these from halfway across the world to save, you know, probably $10, maybe even less than $10 uh, in terms of savings. Like after I think about it, it's just not worth it. it. You know, for the fuel and packaging and everything that it costs to to take to get these from China to me um, probably isn't worth it. So after having done it and then thinking about it, um, I probably would not order from them again. Nothing against them at all. You know, I know they're 
doing their business, but um, just a word about that. So this one, though, I know is a very popular mold from Crafter's Choice. I think it's called the 1051. I mean, somebody will have to correct me about that. Um, but uh, it's a very popular mold I've seen used a lot. So, okay, so those are loaf molds. Um, so that you can do round molds, right? Obviously, this is a PVC pipe from Lowe's. You can get these cut to size. They will cut them for you, or they're very easy to cut yourself if you have um, a saw. Uh, I, lots of people say they don't line them and their soap comes out fine. I have huge problems doing that, so I always line mine. This is just with um, an acrylic sheet that I got from uh, AC Moore for making stencils. And that's what I use, and it comes out beautifully. But round molds, think of PV site pipes. This is a three-inch one. Um, I've also used two-inch ones. Um, I do have a one-inch one that I was going to try for embeds, but I haven't tried that yet. But so PVC pipes from El from Lowe's are a good source. Uh, Brambleberry.com. So this is uh, the square mold from Brambleberry.com. This is actually the very first mold I bought, um, and uh, I really liked it. Um, I still use it from time to time. Uh, if you like nice square bars, love it. It's, they're usually very easy to get out. It's easy to get out. It's not too bad to clean. Um, so Brambleberry.com, they offer a bunch of different kinds of molds. I know, I think they do rectangulars and ovals that are sort of like this as well. Um, I am a cold process guy, not really mountain pour, but I do have some, this is a, a round um, a ball mold from Brambleberry also. Uh, and I will say, I think this is primarily used for melt and pour. I have used it for that. But you can use it for cold process, too. I mean, you just have to let them sit for a long time. But once they're nice and firm, they'll, you'll, they'll come out nicely from these. Uh, so this is the, um, I think this is, they come in three sizes. And this is the small. I can't remember if this is the medium or the large, though. I think this is the large. Uh, but there's a third size in there, so... So brambleberry.com for some molds also, okay. Um, so then uh, let's talk about some other stuff. Uh, you know, don't forget your local stores. I think this one is from, uh, this one might be from Walmart. This is an Easter egg kind of mold. These were from Target, um, and um, they're actually I, they're ice cube trays, but I think they'll work fine. I actually haven't used them. Uh, but I got these, you know, off season for like a dollar a piece. Um, I think I got this during Easter, but it was I don't know two fifty. It was really super cheap. Um, you know, you can also look for um, this is from a flea market, and I think I got this for maybe under a dollar. I can't remember, but uh, check those out. Uh, you can also use those candy making molds, right? This is one I haven't tried. Now, I have tried some of these candy making molds before for some other ones, and they're a little bit finicky. I haven't really perfected how to use them. Some of them I can get out really great, and others I have soap that sort of sticks to them. Um, I have one that I did a Halloween themed soap, so you can see kind of the, um, the gravestone on top was actually from a candy mold. And some of it stuck, but in, in this case, because it was sort of the gravestone, it actually made it look really fantastic. Like, it looks like an old stone. Um, and the little pumpkin um, here that you see is actually from uh, these round molds that I did cold process in. And just punched them out, and then piped a little green stem on and drew in some lines for some pumpkin embeds. Um, this one also has another embed that was from a mold that was a skull and crossbones, and I actually use them as an embed. Uh, the skull and crossbone um, mold, um, I want to say, was from Michael's or Joanne Craft, from probably in their food section. So Michael's, um, AC Moore, Joanne's, Target, Walmart, um, all those places are probably, you know, places you can check out to get the candy making molds, or they actually, they do sell soap making molds. This is just one I picked up at um, Hobby Lobby, actually, and I got it strictly because my mom likes owls, so I was going to try and do an owl soap just for her, you know, just one little owl soap, but you can get soap making molds there, too. Um, this is just random, but, like, 
These are little leaf molds. These are actually butter molds. Um, so my dad used to work for uh, many, many years for Keller's Creamery and make butter. And making sculpted butter or butter into molds is actually kind of popular. So out in Lancaster County, I, I, you can find, uh, this is where I found these, but you can order them online. Um, you can find little butter making molds. And these work great for making little embeds. Um, and they store really well because they're, they're a small size. So butter making molds. Um, this is from uh, an, an Etsy store called Mold House. Uh, these are little koi molds, um, so which was a really fun shape, and so I brought that up just to show you what that looks like. I made little um, blue um, bars using the brambleberry square mold, and then I put the koi the koi soap um, in top, sort of as an embed, and made these. I called these koi pond. Um, so. These come from an Etsy store called Mold House, and I'll have the link down below, but they have lots of different ones. This is actually a candy mold that has pretty smart, small squares in it, but I've used it to make um, like guest size soaps or travel soaps, like do a set of six of them and package them together to make little guest size soaps. Um, I like, I've ordered a couple molds from them. Um, I, I think they, they actually, I can't remember. They actually may be located in China as well, um, or somewhere not in the U.S. I forget where it is, though. Uh, but um, you might want to check those out. I'll have a link down below. Okay, and then finally, you know, you may want to consider making your own silicon molds. Um, so I have these here. This is, um, <clears throat> let's see if I can get these in the shot here. So this is um, strawberries. This one over here is strawberries. And this one is lemon wedges. Um, I made these myself, and I made them out of um, a mold-making material called um, Alumalite High Strength 3. I'll have a link down below to the company. It's called Alumalite, and they sell different kinds of uh, mold-making materials. Um, I have made a couple of molds myself. I've done some Halloween ones and some fruit ones. Um, I will tell you that this stuff itself, Illumina, is not cheap. It's kind of pricey. Um, but it makes a great mold. This, I mean, this will last probably for a very long time. The strawberry ones, I made this one with actual real live strawberries. And the, the, the soap molds that it makes are beautiful. I mean, it gets tons of great detail. Um, it, it will probably last a long time. But, you know, mold making is definitely its own little sort of niche. You have to build like a frame to hold it and then put all the stuff in. And so I have a couple videos on making molds. So if you're interested, check those out. Um, you can do cheaper molds. Um, and there's a couple videos online if you want to use things like, you can buy a tube of silicone from Lowe's and mix it with like cornstarch. Uh, and you can make some molds with that. And so look for some videos on that. Or um, I think, um, uh, who is it? Sarah Milroy over at Spicy Pine Cone. She has a video of making um, her own molds using, uh, I want to say she uses dish detergent, like Dawn dish detergent and something else. I forget what it was. But there are cheaper ways to make molds. They, they may not last as long, but if you're only looking to make you know, something for a specific creative soap, that may be a way to go. These, uh, this Illuminlite stuff will make a mold that lasts a lot longer. So, okay. So let me check my notes, just make sure I sort of talked about all of the mold places. Um, oh, I will also mention um, this one here. So this is the Essential Depot red silicone mold with a basket. Um, let me also tell you that uh, this isn't a mold itself, but it is something to use with this. Um, I'll just show you, let's see. We can see it here. Um, there's another place called the Great Soap Shop. Um, if you're looking to do dividers, they sell the dividers and they will fit this mold. So there's a little end piece and you put in uh, let's see. I didn't bring the other end piece, but there's another one. And then you can just slide your dividers in. It has um, three slots on one end piece, 
uh, on one side of the end piece. Uh, so you could do three, or on the other side it does, um, it has two slots, so you could divide it into a total of three different areas. Um, or you could use the three slot one and just use one divider and divide yours in half. So with this um, divider kit, you can do um, two, three, or four different divisions in this mold. Um, so these come from uh, the Great Soap Shop, um, and um, they're great to work with. They're fantastic. In fact, I think they can even make other dividers for other kinds of molds. If you get a hold of them, um, I think they will do that for you as well uh, and do custom things. Um, but I will have a link to their shop down below as well. Okay, great. Um, so I think that's it for molds. Um, next, let's talk about another fun one, fragrances. We'll be right back. Okay, so another fun one, fragrances, fragrance oils, essential oils. Um, I have a couple places I order from. Um, by far, probably the most uh, that I have ordered from are Nature's Garden, uh, which is, this is uh, one of their fragrance oils, and this is one of their essential oils. This is Star Anise. Um, they are probably, um, in terms of fragrance oils, that's probably who I order my fragrance oils from the most, uh, along with Brambleberry. I do have a bunch of um, Brambleberry fragrances. I like both of them a lot. Um, all the fragrances that I have used with them, um, are really nice. I like both of their websites. They offer information on, you know, how it is to soap with those. Does it discolor? Does it accelerate? Um, they offer, uh, at least with Nature's Garden, I'm not sure with Brambleberry, but users can write in and write reviews. So that's really nice. I like those. Um, I do have from Wholesale Supplies Plus a couple of Crafter's Choice um, either fragrance oils or essential oils, so I've ordered from them. Um, and then for my essential oils, the company I use probably the most is called uh, New Directions Aromatics. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, Ar Aromatics. Um, and you can see their, their essential oils uh, come in uh, metal containers, um, uh, shipped very well. And, uh, the, and the other one I gonna throw a shout out to this is um, from Mad Oils um, I actually haven't used this yet I just got it but um, Joanna Schmidt um, has a Facebook group called Soapers Retreat that um, I hang out on a bunch and she's just a really um, cool nice lady so um, I want to give a shout out to Mad Oils for their new business that they just opened up this I, by the way is called Downy April Fresh and it smells so good <laughs> but um, those are so those are the ones that I have used the the most in terms of fragrances. Um, the shipping's all fine. I will tell you probably um, probably Brambleberry. I, I don't know what they do. I think they have days like specific days that they ship. So sometimes their shipping times are a little bit longer. Um, I do have to say that about Brambleberry. Although don't get me wrong, I like. I like their company, I like their products. Um, Soap Queen T T um, TV on YouTube is probably one of the primary channels I watched when I first started making soap. Um, so I really like them. I'm just saying, their, their shipping sometimes takes a little bit longer. But um, New Directions Aromatics will offer lots of great information on their essential oils. They will give you a whole sort of profile about the oil, how it's distilled. You can download MSDS um, sheets directly from their site. Um, they give you lots of good uh, information. They have tons and tons of choices from their essential oils. Um, so I really like them. Nature's Garden has a big selection of fragrance oils. I really like their selection. Um, I haven't ordered a whole lot from Crafter's Choice. Um, and um, I, I will tell you, some of the fragrance oils that I have from them, I'm just not a, I don't know what it is, a super fan of. Like, um... I have a Moroccan mint from Brambleberry that I love, and then I ordered a Moroccan mint from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and I don't love it as much. It's not bad, um, and maybe it's just that, you know, I got used to the Brambleberry one because that's what I use first, but, um, but you know, their products are good. They ship fine. Their, their shipping is really fast, actually. Um, 
So, okay, so I will have links down to all of these down below uh, for fragrance oils, okay? All right, uh, let me check my notes. Uh, we got everybody? Okay, next, another fun one, colorants. Stick around. Okay, colorants. I love me some colors. Um, so, all right, let's start off with, um, let's start off with ultramarines. Uh, I do not use ultramarines a lot. In fact, I think this is the only ultramarine I have, which is an ultramarine blue. It's from Brambleberry. Um, I've used this. It does give a nice blue. Um, I do like my non-natural colors, um, but if, so after the ultramarine, if we're going to stick with sort of natural colors, uh, there are certainly lots of them out there. Now, I will tell you, I don't have a great source for this. Um, well, some I do. I, ha I got these from Wholesale Supplies Plus. So this is anata seed, matter root, alkanet root, alfalfa powder. All of these you can infuse into oils to color them before you soap with the oil, you can add them directly to the soap once you get to trace. They will all add color. Um, natural colorants, I don't do a ton with them. Um, uh, they're interesting. I probably would like to do a little bit more with them, but their colors tend to morph over time, if you ask me. Um, they're a lot harder to sort of get consistent results with, again, my opinion. Uh, but, you know, there are people out there who only, who don't want artificial things in their soap, so they want to go with natural stuff. I totally get that. Um, so I got these from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Now I have a bunch of other ones. These are some interesting ones. This is uh, Retangent. Um, this is Indigo, uh, Woad, and Spirulina. Um, and uh, I actually got these from a co-op on Facebook called Soper's Resource Co-op. Um, and I, so I don't know exactly where they are from. Um, if anybody has good sources for, you know, in, indigo or woad, um, which are both sort of blues, light blues, um, I would love to hear that, because uh, I actually don't know where they came from. Uh, but so those are the, the natural colorants over there. And then we have micas, uh, and, and just colored powderants. So I have um, here a selection from, this is from the conservatory. Um, they come in these kind of cool fo foil packets. Um, I personally like these. I, I have not had a problem with them. I, I have read some people who, who are not huge fans and they find that they morph. Um, but I don't have a ton of selection of these. Um, and I, again, I've used them and have had good results with them. So, uh, this is the conservatory. They offer a ton of different micas on their site, though, to choose from. So they have a really nice selection. Um, these are called Vibrance Micas. I have a whole bunch of these. These are gorgeous, gorgeous micas. Um, and, uh, I, I will have a a link to these when the name, oh my God, the name of the place is totally um, escaping me at, at right now. Um, oh, Vibrance Micas. Good Lord, they're gonna kill me. Uh, anyway, I will have a link to the Vibrance Micas. These are beautiful, beautiful Micas. I love using them in soap. They give a great little like shimmer to the soap when you're up close to it. They're just fantastic Micas. I can't say enough good things about them. Um, for really bright neons, I happen to like um, the neons from TKB Trading. Uh, these come in powders. Uh, they give super bright colors um, to soaps. I just love, love, love them. Uh, probably one of my favorites is a liquid colorant. This is from Celestial Colors. I have a whole um, range of these, and I love them. I think they give beautiful colors to soap. They're really easy to use because they're liquid and they're already in bottles. You can just sort of squirt some in your soap, see what the color is. If you need to make it darker, you squirt it a little more. Uh, they're super easy to use. But I will tell you, these are made with FD um, and C dyes, and some people don't like that. So just be aware of that. They do offer all kinds of information on their site about their dyes and sort of what's in them. 
Uh, but I, I think they give beautiful, beautiful colors to soap. For white, obviously, titanium dioxide. I buy mine from Brambleberry, and it comes in a water-soluble version, which I mix in a squeeze bottle, so it's really easy to use. Um, my black is also from TKB Trading, and it's called Blackest Black, um, but this is the last I have of it. Again, it's water-soluble. I have it pre-mixed in a squeeze bottle. Um, but once this is done, it's done. They don't offer black as black anymore. They do have a replacement that they recommend. I haven't tried it, um, but uh, TKB trading for black. And then again, I want to give another shout out to Mad Oils. Um, so these are some micas. I just got them in, um, and I'm super excited to try them. They're just beautiful colors when I look on the website. Uh, and I love the names for them. This one's Peacock Mica. This is Key West Blue, and this last one was my favorite called the Maniacal P. Um, but uh, their colors are just beautiful. Uh, I've heard really good things about the micas from other people on Facebook, so I'm excited to try those as well. Okay, so those are my colorants. Um, let's see. Check my notes. I think I got everything. Okay, great. So next, let's talk a little bit about additives. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, soap additives. So there's a ton of additives out there. Um, I will say probably the thing I add the most is probably goat milk powder. And I get, I get this from Walmart. Um, uh, it, you know, just a scoop, it la it's really shelf stable, lasts a long time. You can throw a scoop in your soap, really easy to use. So that's probably the additive I use the most. But, you know me, I like to experiment, so I use lots of other ones. Kale and clay is another good one. This is from Brambleberry. I've gotten a bunch of additives from Brambleberry. Again, uh, they always do a nice job. Sometimes their shipping is a little bit um, longer than other places, but um, really good products. Um, Wholesale Supplies Plus, I know it's another company we've already talked about. So uh, they, all, they offer lots of different additives there. This is chamomile powder, kelp powder, some uh, colloidal oatmeal. Um, another one we've already talked about, um, uh, Nature's Garden. This happens to be activated charcoal. You can certainly pick this up also, I think, at probably like Rite Aid or CVS or f drugstores, pharmacy shops. Um, so those are companies we've kind of already talked about. Um, some that we haven't talked about, um, I'll mention bef uh, now. So um, this is a uh, Rasul clay or red clay, um, uh, which sort of has a kind of maroony color. Uh, but this is from uh, the sage.com or I think it's actually the majestic mountain sage. Um, so I've ordered um, a bunch of uh, clays and things from them. Uh, really nice. This is Fuller's Earth. Um, I have a couple of other things from them. Uh, I really like their packaging. It's always nice and sort of neat. Um, so they're nice. Uh, what else? Uh, from Nature with Love. I have a couple. I have a couple of Dead Sea related things from them. I don't have a ton from them. I've ordered some. Uh, I believe some palm free steric acid from them, but I also have some Dead Sea salt and Dead Sea water, I think. Uh, I think they were having a special on Dead Sea stuff when I bought some stuff. I actually haven't used it, but uh, from Nature with Love, um, they're another online company. Um, another one I like for lotion stuff, but they also offer, they offer all kinds of like just crazy stuff. Uh, I mean, especially for lotions. That's what they sort of specialize in. But you can find stuff for soap there as well. So this is sodium lactate. Uh, this is a green tea extract. Uh, this is from lotioncrafters.com. Um, but they offer other kinds of additives that you, you can use in soap as well. Um, I, I like them. They're sometimes a little on the pricey side, but you can find stuff there that you probably can't find in other places. Uh, so they're good. Um, silk, I haven't used a lot of silk, but I've been trying it lately. So I have some Tussa silk and as well as some bamboo silk. Uh, these, actually I think, um, I can't remember which one is from where. I think it's the, the bamboo silk I got from the Joyful Sheep. Um, and shout out to Katie White over at Royalty Soaps who um, shared that resource with me. Uh, but I think the Joyful Sheep offers both Tussa and Bamboo Silk. 
Um, so check them out. They, I, I've only ordered that from them that one time. Super nice. She, she sends out like um, a sample of her other roving wool that was really nice and uh, ships really fast. She's on Etsy. I'll have a link below to that. Um, and then, you know, this is just a random one, but don't forget to check out things like Etsy and eBay when you're looking for other things. This happens to be white willow bark powder, and I was using this in a um, bath bomb uh, because white willow bark powder has uh, salicylate in it, which is, you know, the, which is the same thing you could find in aspirin um, and could help with some skin conditions. Uh, but I was just sort of testing it out. So this came from a place called Salem's Magic Shop. Uh, I've never bought anything else from them. I was just looking for white willow bark powder, and that just happened where I found it. So don't forget about places like Etsy um, or eBay or um, there's lots of other places out there, I think, that do um, sort of handcrafted or wildcrafted things. Um, Art Fire might be one of them. Um, uh, anyway, so that's where that's from. Okay, so I think that's it. There's a ton of other additives out there. People use all kinds of things in their soap. Um, these are just the ones that I have probably used the most. Clays, uh, charcoal, milk powders, milk, a little bit of silk. Some I've done some other experimenting with uh, chamomile powders and kelp powders and things like that. Oh, this was beeswax. Um, you can also get this from Wholesale Supplies Plus or Crafter's Choice if you have a Crafter's Choice affiliate you like to work with. Um, beeswax is uh, a soap additive. Um, or, you know, if you can find a local um, uh, 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 bees, uh, a beekeeper, uh, that's also great too. I will tell you, I've tried to um, um, melt down my own beeswax. I've only done it once. I find it really hard to do. So, uh, but I do have a friend who kept bees and gave me some wax. Now there are a couple of videos online on how to do it really easy where you build this sort of just solar melter and let it sit all day. I don't have that and uh, <laughs> I tried to do it in the house in my kitchen with putting it in water and sort of reboiling it. It took forever, I couldn't get it clean. So I buy my beeswax um, just because it's nice and clean and easy to use, so. All right, that's it for additives. Uh, I think next will be our last category, which is just going to be some equipment and miscellaneous stuff, so stick around. Okay, folks, so I, we have some, uh, just some random things left over, just some equipment, uh, and, you know, things generally used in soap making, uh, so I thought I would go over that. Um, so first, let me start with um, apron. I know I have my nice bright green apron that I love. Um, I got... Um, embroidered with a custom divinely designed logo that actually comes from a, uh, an Etsy shop um, called Something You Aprons. Uh, I think it used to be called Little Bo Peep, but um, I'm put, I'll put a link down to there. Uh, she was super nice to work with. Uh, she has lots of different colors, um, and you can you know pick the um, you know what you want embroidered. She does a really nice job. They're super cute. And she does other stuff besides aprons, too. But uh, that's where I got my apron. Um, okay, so uh, Lowe's. Lowe's is a place I go. I have these little uh, containers. These are paint containers. But they are perfect size. They are. This one's been used a lot. This They're graduated. So you can do some measurements. But um, they're super cheap. Um, I don't even remember what they were. But they're super cheap so that... I have used these probably for a year, and you can see they're starting to fade and come apart, but they're still great to work with. But even if not, like even if I had to throw them away, it would be super cheap to replace these. So these are from Lowe's. I also get my goggles, um, which are just, you know, safety goggles from the hardware section. Uh, and it was important to me, you know, because of the lie, um, and you know the potential to make you blind. Um, I you know I always think it's important to wear goggles. So these have wraparound sides to them. So even if you get some lye splashed somewhere, you are very unlikely to get it in your eye. So I think eye safety is very important. So I know some people don't wear gloves, um, and you know that's a personal choice, I guess. But um, I suggest wearing gloves too. Although you know I don't follow. A lot of people say you need to wear long sleeves, and you should never soap with. Um, like shorts on, and, and I do that. So 
I, I'm not preaching to anyone, uh, but safety goggles, I would highly suggest that you do wear those. I don't want anyone going blind making soap. Um, my gloves, <laughs> my black gloves are sort of my little signature on my videos, and I get them from Lowe's also, and I was totally sucked in by the advertising because they're so cool. They're called Venom, Venom gloves. These are, these are um, thicker gloves. They're ha heavy duty black nitrile gloves. Uh, so if you have a latex allergy, um, they're good to use uh, because they're nitrile. Uh, I will tell you, these are a little pricey. And every time I buy a box, I think I'm ridiculous for buying these. I should just get the cheapest nitrile gl gel gloves I can, and then every time I give in and buy my black Venom gloves, because I think they're cool. Um, okay, so uh, what else? Um, from, I use a temperature, I don't, I still check my temperatures a lot, but I think it's more just sort of habit and doing the process. Um, so this I got from Amazon. Um, I think that was the cheapest place I could find it, but it's an infrared thermometer. It's really easy to use. You just press it. You get that little um, light that will measure it. You can do it in Celsius or in Fahrenheit. It's really easy, simple to use. Um, so that's that. If you're into bath bomb kind of stuff, um, I have the bath bomb mold from, this is the uh, stainless steel one uh, from Brambleberry. It works very nice. Uh, lots of people love uh, the holiday ornament from um, Hobby Lobby. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but these are super cheap. Um, and so even if they don't last really long, it's, you know, it's probably fine. Uh, but I picked up a set when I was at, when I was traveling recently. You can also get other kind of funky things. This is from Amazon. This is a meatballer, but you can use it to make different size. Or actually I played around with doing really cool shaped um, pyramid um, bath bombs, and these are some pyramid molds I got from Amazon as well, uh, from a company called Atco, A-T-E-C-O, um, but they offer other kinds of molds as well. Um, bottles, jars, things like that, like this, this is a plastic, an amber plastic low profile jar. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of jars and bottles and cap shapes and designs and things like that. Um, so I have a whole bunch of these in uh, two ounce, four ounce, eight ounce, and then I have some amber bottles for in four ounce and um, eight ounce for lotions. I get all these from SKS um, bottles. They offer a pretty wide selection. Their prices are pretty good. Um, I will tell you, although I think twice from them now, I've ordered stuff and when I ordered it, they didn't tell me it was out of stock. And then I got a partial shipment with the notification that it was out of stock. So that, that's the only slightly annoying thing about that. But I will tell you, I like, this was my favorite design, was the amber bottle with the low profile lids. I like sort of how sleek it looks. Um, so I have a lot of the amber, the amber ones, but that's from SKS Bottle. Um, I love these little um, containers for doing fragrance oil measurements. They're glass and they're graduated on the side, but they usually hold just the perfect amount for me to sort of play around with. If I want to um, mix up some fragrances or some essential oils, I can kind of play with this. Uh, these are from Walmart and they're super cheap. I, I want to say they're like, they might be less than a dollar, I forget, but I have a bunch of these. Um, these little cups are great for uh, different size plastic cups are great for mixing micas, like if you want to mix your micas in some oil, or maybe you have some additives you want to mix in micas beforehand. I use lots of little cups like this. Now this is a, I believe this is a four ounce cup, and I got these for a really good price from uh, the, the uh, let me get this right, uh, I'm going to call it wrong the web restaurant store. So it's an online source. Um, I'll have a link below, obviously, but these, uh, these size I got from them. Uh, there's this other size I really like too. This I actually just get from Target in their paper plate uh, section where they have paper plates and napkins and you know plastic spoons and that stuff. 
They have these you can buy, I think there's 50 or 100 in a, in a package. And this is a good size also. I like this size for mixing my micas. If you want smaller ones, uh, these are great. You can, <laughs> I would say, these are pill cups actually, and you can usually find these at your local pharmacy. Um, if you're looking to do smaller amounts of things, uh, they're super great. I love them because they're disposable, like when you're mixing micas and things like that. You just sort of mix them up and then you can toss them later. So plastic, little plastic cups. And probably one of the things I use the most of are these little pipettes. These are three millimeter pipettes. Um, I have gotten these from a couple of different places, so I'm sure there are places out there that have good deals, but the latest one that I have found a good deal is, um, it's a place called, it's on Etsy, and it's called Never Pay Retail Again, and you can get a uh, hundred of them, I think, for eight dollars. So I, I usually order a, a couple hundred at a time. Um, so it's such it's a good deal. So um, and then also this is my scale. I like this scale. It's nice and thin. And why I sort of like it is because it I have a drawer and it fits really great in the drawer. Um, I got this from LotionCrafters.com. The other reason I like it is um, when you turn it on, it never goes off. A lot of scales, digital scales that you buy, if you don't do anything with them, they will go off automatically. And the old scale that I used to use, which I still have and I use for other stuff uh, in my craft room, uh, I'd be in the middle of measuring oils and it would go off. Uh, this one will not go off. You can set it so it never ever goes off until you actually turn it off. Um, you can do backlighting with it. You can do um, grams and ounces and different kinds of things. So it's good. It doesn't do really, really small quantities. Um, but uh, for, for making soap, it, it does a really nice job. And again, it's very low profile. Uh, and when you order it, mine's all dirty. Um, when you order it, it comes with another thing that you can fit on here that has a, a large, um, a sort of like bowl kind of thing that will fit on as a, as a, a piece that you can add if you want to add larger, if you want to measure larger quantities of stuff like that. So I, I like this scale. Uh, lotioncrafters.com. So, um, okay. Uh, uh, lip balm stuff. Uh, I get all of my lip balm stuff from Elements Bath and Body. They offer a couple of different varieties of tube shapes and sizes, lots of uh, different kinds of cap colors. Uh, they offer, I think, both a rounded and a flat cap. Um, so, Elements Bath and Body is where I like uh, to get those. Uh, I will say also, just off the top of my head, if I think if you go to um, SKS Bottle and Jars, they also have a uh, lip balm section, and I think they, I want to say they offer bigger tubes that are made of paper, uh, which is the one place I think I could find those, so. Um, okay, I think that's it. So thanks for sticking with me if you've watched this whole video. Um, I applaud you for sticking in there. Um, again, these are, you know, these are the stuff I use, the, the, the companies I've purchased from. You know, they may not be the absolute best out price out there. Um, some of them I think are. Uh, and, you know, but they are the ones I have used. If you have suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Let me know where you find, you know, the best source for um, your lip balm stuff or um, for making bath bombs. You know, let them know. Put it down in the comments. Other readers or other watchers would love to read that as well. If you have a, a great source for something, uh, let us know. Okay, comments, questions, leave them below. If you've liked this video, click that like button. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, click the subscribe button over there. Uh, thanks very much for watching. This is Kevin with Divinely Design. Check back for more soap, bath, and beauty related videos. All right, stay well, everyone.